Right, so it is my first ever go in front of the Sonia Bates cameras, and I've brought you to Bone Hill Mill Fishery, which has been a been a little favourite place of mine at the minute. It's had some very, very nice carp fishing that we've been doing. But what I've brought you here for is to almost tell you a bit of a, a secret that I've had, or sort of a secret that I've had, in a hook bait that I've used. Because what I don't want, I didn't want to come here today and to go through various Sonia Bates products and almost not tell you fibs, but not be able to tell you something I've got good opinion of, because I've not used the bait for anywhere near enough time yet. But what I have done is I've used the 8 mil sinking expanders. I've used them for probably three years now. Three years, two and a half years now. And they were actually the bait that won me the Maven Max S final back in 2019. Because they're, they're very much a, a very unique product, if you like, for a, an 8 mil pellet or 8 mil expander pellet they're the only um, 8 mil available that already sinks. And that's what I needed, because I was playing about with all sorts of different pellets, trying to find a hook bait from the bomb that was more versatile than a hard pellet, because I felt that they weren't picking hard pellet out, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Just a, a different sort of standouty bait that almost replicated the swollen up pellets that were on the bottom, but didn't have the, the issues, if you like, that the, the blown pellets that we were trying to use, trying to hair rig, trying to soften, a conventional course belts put on the hook it's impossible it's an absolute nightmare and it was doing me head in so we had to have a play and it was these were definitely the choice finding their eight mil sinking expanders they allowed me to create a pellet by softening it up and playing about with it in a few ways that we're going to talk about to create a lovely hook bait that was it was different to everyone else's in fact i was able to use a hook bait on my own that no one else was using that was lovely big visible among everything else because that is the key thing when you're bomb fishing is finding a a bait that stands out among many. It's no good putting the same thing on, but again, we'll talk about that in a minute. And these were the answer for me. So that's what I've done today. First off was to come straight out and to tell you pretty much the truth. I mean, what I've been using for quite a long time now, go through the reasons that I, I do certain things with it, the way you prep them to make sure in the right way, and above all else, the versatility and the, the uses that for me, I'd honestly say now it is my go-to hook bait. Whenever I'm feeding eight mils on a bomb, the first thing I put on is double eight mil expander every single time without fail. We have that much confidence in it because I know for me, the fish are always going to pick that hook bait out among all others. But say onto the, the technical bit now, I want to go through a little bit of preparation of the bait just to make sure it's right. It can withstand that cast and it goes into exactly where you want it in the peg. So really quickly before I go into the, the technical nitty gritty sort of thing of why I want pellets in certain ways, Firstly, I've got to go through the, the preparation side of things because although they're, they're quite easy to get right for a basic soft pellet, in this situation, when I throw them on a bomb, obviously they have to be able to withstand the bomb hitting the water, being dragged down at quite a, a fast rate and landing on the bottom in quite a, a nasty way. And of course the cast as well, if you want to chuck it all in. So they need to be a little bit tougher than completely swollen. Um, what I do for that, there's a few little tricks sorts of things that can make a, a slightly denser pellet but at the same time, you have to get it right, otherwise you end up with a, just a hard pellet that's not quite soft enough to put on the hook, so it's no good. So for me, mega, mega simple. First thing, little diddy tub of water. It's hit me out, bandom tubs are proving to be the best little storage things ever for me expanders. So I just want a tiny tub of water, and I've just half filled that with water, ready to go. And what I'm gonna put in is a tiny bit, probably 20% of a glycerin-based liquid. So it's really, really important, the glycerin element. This is coming from me, me Richard Chapman influence. My mate's definitely gone on to this. And I just want a tiny bit of the glycerin, slightly to add a bit of flavor and a bit of scent to it, which is all great for, for confidence and things like that. But above all else, what the glycerin adds is sort of a, it just tightens the pellet up a little bit because it hasn't got that 100% water to completely expand and go really soft. The glycerin definitely just tightens your pellet up a little bit just saves it breaking down simple as that it's just so it's a bit tougher when it's on the hair rig and what i want to do i'll make sure that's completely dissolved so that's goes a little nice milky color get rid of that completely but it's still water yeah i don't want it to alter the texture of the water at all to go a bit slimy because these pellets they have the tiniest tiniest sort of pores on them and if you have a a thicker do you know i mean a bit of a gloopy liquid then they do not take that liquid in and you end up with just hard pellets with slimy uh, glycerin all over them. That ain't no good. It's simply that 20% about right. That's the sort of ratio that I'm after. So whack that in, get me pellets. And what I want to do is just cover the pellets with water. So there's just enough water to just cover the pellets. If we've got that right, lovely. 
and by just covering them now I know that that's perfectly enough I can whack them in the fridge leave them to do whatever they want yeah they're going to be the pellets in the perfect natural form obviously with a bit of a bit of coconut flavoring added to them to make them smell nice but the pellets themselves are going to be the natural colour a nice sort of I don't know like a, a very light brownie colour very much the same as a um, a feed pellet whatever else you're going to put in they're going to produce that for me what I can also do at this point is that I'll add my colours or whatever else if I want to dye a few different batches different colours at that point is when I'm going to add me a little bit of colour so I'll whiz that in and what I'm going to do is put lid on give him a shake and the lid is the really really important bit as well yeah it makes a huge difference I don't want to have to leave the lid off and let them do what they want so I'm going to mix that up now I've got that lovely yellow colour going on there so I've got some yellow ones I do some red ones as well to give myself options that I'll go through in a minute but by having the lid on ready they've only got the certain amount of water and no oxygen no air to soak in air to suck in as well which are to if I were to leave them uh, with the lid off they would carry on expanding and go quite soft but by having a lid on almost a, a reduced area if you like for them to swell up in they'll go to as much as they can they'll go lovely and soft all the way through but they'll stay a little bit denser and with that and as well the glycerin liquid that's just going to add to a little bit more rigidity a bit more confidence if you like for me when I throw my pellet in I know it's going to be right I say the last thing to do with them is ideally you need to do these the night before as well they need to be done prepped well in advance there's no good doing them on the day you're not going to get a pellet that's good enough if you like to withstand the cast so the night before whack them in the fridge overnight and they'll produce pretty much what I'm going to show you in a minute the perfect pellet for using on the bomb right so in true blue peter style what I've got now I've got my pre-prepared pellets that I've done myself last night so they've been in the fridge all night and they've gone the, the, the spot on there what I'm looking for when I've done my pellets ready and what I have done just to show you lot is I've done three different colours like I say it gives me that versatility of being able to try different colours whenever I think I'm not getting bites on one I swap to another it might get me a few bites when them fish go a little bit moody but say it gives me options and that's the, the key thing for me is I've got a hook bait I'm confident in with lots of different options of colour so I can have a little dick about on the day but as I say they're nice and softly done and you can see they're swollen up to the maximum I mean but at the same time because of that glycerin element because I've had them in a tub they're lovely and tight still yeah they've not gone all, all broken down or porousy they're still going to be fine for 99% of most bomb fishing situations I'm still going to be able to hair rig two of them on which is what I'm going to go through shortly and they're going to stand out among my three million pellets that are probably fed in my peg and they just create a lovely standing out point that the fish are going to more likely than not pick up just because it's different to all the others so simple as that good ready to go so the only other option i've got as i said 99 percent of the time i'll go for ones that are uh, soak myself because i want them that slightly bit bigger than the pre-prepared ones that you can buy in the tubs what i will do however is that when i'm faced with sort of a great big chuck where i've got to use like a 30 gram plus lead or maybe really really deep water or a horrendously windy nasty day sometimes then I'm a little bit worried if you like at the the durability of my bait when I'm using my own ones I mean they are quite a soft fragile hook bait at the end of the day and I can be a little bit worried at whether it's reached the bottom and whether it's still on in in really nasty wild situations and in that case I can just use some pre-done ones which are I'm not going to say not as good they just gives me another option again in that they're slightly smaller but far denser pellet and that they're still fine still lovely and soft so I can whack a needle through them put them on a hair but what they're going to give me is a bit more assurance if you like that they've got to the bottom and I'm fishing with a hook bait on the bottom on them really nasty days or when I've got a larger lead on so for me they're not I don't want to use the word not as good for the reason I like these so much better is because of the size and because they stand out that is the key thing about bomb fishing for me is that you need a, a hook bait that stands out among all the others so it gets picked up and the larger the pellet the easier that happens in my opinion these being a little bit smaller maybe that's why they get picked up quite as much but to fix a problem whenever I'm worried about my other ones not getting to the bottom they're definitely the ones I go to so they've got plenty of choices same again lots of different colors and whatever flavors that you fancy trying their options on them and they just fill that gap for the days when I don't think the expanders are quite right but above all else within that one single hook bait whether it's pre-prepared or I do them myself it gives me pretty much everything I need for a multitude of different bomb hook lengths that are going to cover as many options as possible 
So with all the preparation pretty much covered in terms of what I want to do to achieve the pellets that I'm trying to, to get from the yuck, the last thing I want to have a little chat about is the whole reason why I think they're good in the first place. And ultimately it, it stems back very much to of course winning Maver using them, but then it was in its very early days of I was using them because I, I used to think of all sorts of things, reasons why they worked. In all honesty, it was due to the underwater filming that we've done with Rob Hughes that really made me click, and not just that in, uh, filming, in fact, it was watching other underwater films that made me understand why this hook bait in particular was so important and so effective in so many cases. And as I've mentioned plenty of times through this video, it is all about the standing out of your hook bait. I mean, a, a typical example could be about to show you now, if I threw 108 mils on the floor and then chucked another of them same eight mils in the middle of them, odds are you're not gonna be able to pick it out. It's gonna look exactly the same. And it's no different to what we're creating when we're feeding them lines at whatever distance in the lake. By constantly feeding them the pellets of whatever size with a catapult, the chance of picking the individual of the same pellets out, it's very, very, very slim unless there's three billion carp in your peg. If that's not the case and they're just grazing, then what you always need is that standout hook bait. I mean, whether it's a, a different situation, you're throwing a method feeder, whatever else, a homing in point, this is exactly no difference on the bomb. And it's simply a case of, I've got a big, sexy, lovely bait that if I were to throw 100 pellets on the floor and lay this in the middle of them, you'd be able to pick that pellet out straight away because it stands out. It's an eye-catching thing that looks, I'm not even gonna say better, it just grabs their attention. I mean, bit more of a mouthful, bit of a tastier morsel maybe, who knows, but it grabs their attention among lots of the same, which that is all it's about when it comes to bomb fishing. Obviously, there's different situations with rigs and all that that um, you need to incorporate, but that's a lot to do with the fishing and the type of bottom you're fishing on. It's not what I want to focus on today. Today is all about them hook bait options, I mean, or my preferred hook bait options and the reasons that I use it for, for catching more fish on the bomb than I can honestly say I ever have before now that I'm using the right hook bait that's standing out and I'm just having more fish find my hook bait among the million pile of eight mils. So while you're having a little look at that, I'm going to go on to catching a few fish before we jump on that motorway home. So, of course, oh, he's pulling a bit. I had to have a little plate, <laughs> and we've caught a few doing it. It's not solid, they're being right moody today, but anyway, we've nailed a few doing it. So, with a bit of luck, I've managed to teach you a little bit about my thoughts on hook baits for bomb fishing. So, for me, it is a massively, massively big thing, a massive amount of confidence for me in using these hook baits whenever I'm fishing on the bomb. Of course, they have all sorts of other versatile uses, whether you want to use them on the pole or whatever else. But for me, these expanders are the best ever bomb hook bait in the world. So if you like what we've done, we are going to be out filming lots and lots and lots more videos for the Sonya Bates YouTube channel. So feel free to like and subscribe. And of course, leave a message in the comments if there's anything specific that you'd like me or any of the other consultants to focus on. But hope you enjoyed a bit. I'm going to catch a couple more and we will see you all very, very soon.